being safe, uh, social distance, wearing face masks, and we, we're going to get into all of that. Uh, also, we're excited because uh, uh, we're, uh, we're looking at following the guidelines established by the LA County Department of Health. Uh, we're excited about transitioning to in-person services. Uh, we haven't seen our Aztec scholars in over a year, um, and, and, and we're excited to, to be working with them again. Uh, we're ex excited about implementing our new expectations while on campus. Uh, uh, as you see in a bit, uh, we want to keep students spaced out. We want to uh, have everybody uh, 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 socially distanced. Uh, when they're sitting down, they're going to have uh, the, the, the plastics uh, around their, their desk and their chairs. Uh, and most importantly, uh, we're excited because uh, uh, not only are we going to be safe, but we miss our Aztecs. We want to uh, be able to uh, 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 see your children in the eye and, and see when they're when they're learning and and and, uh, and uh, that happens when when they're on campus, uh, so there's just a couple of the reasons why we're excited to be returning to school. Mr. Velasco, uh, uh, he's 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 changing it up on me. He assigned me this one, and last time it was Miss Pegarari. But um, uh, we want to uh, uh, just remind you that this was not a decision that we made uh, at Azusa High School. Uh, this was a decision that we followed through the LA County Department of Public Health. Uh, along with uh, uh, the, uh, along with the district making the decision, uh, but most importantly, uh, we we want to make sure that uh, if you uh, allow your child to return, uh, we want you to know that it is going to be in a, in a safe manner. And in order uh, for for this to happen, uh, we need to do this together. Uh, like I said earlier, the importance of of physical distancing uh, while walking on campus. Uh, and from classes, uh, from the car to the school, we want to make sure that we're walking at six feet um, distancing. Also, we want to make sure that uh, that uh, that we're wearing our face masks at all times. Uh, you're going to see in a couple pictures uh, that uh, every desk inside the classroom is spaced out four feet uh, from each other. Uh, they also have the the, the plastic uh, partitions to make sure that that uh, kids are are, are uh, safe and healthy. Also, from the teacher, the, the students are going to be spaced out six feet. Uh, so six feet from the teacher, four feet from each other uh, uh, with, with face masks. Uh, and we're going to make sure that Aztecs are safe. If you look at the bottom, uh, there's, if you look closely, there's some blue uh, marks on the floor that shows that uh, uh, we're going to recommend how students should be uh, spaced out at six feet. Ms. Pegarari. Unmute, unmute. Thank you. While students and staff are on campus, it is required that everyone maintain a, um, uh, a face mask. And we have plenty of hand sanitizer available throughout our campus. As you walk into any of our offices, through our hallways, there are opportunities for students to properly uh, sanitize their hands. Uh, as well, the restrooms are fully stocked for students to be able to wash their hands um, as they go through their day. Um, we're gonna remind our students of the protocols for sneezing, coughing, all those kinds of things. Um, and just, we start with um, that kind of safety at home. So if you would, you know, carefully remind your, um, your family members about how important hand washing is, as well as as um, maintaining uh, good um, sanitary conditions in terms of coughing, sneezing, or if um, if kids are sick, uh, know know that our our programs on, on campus are optional at this time, and get healthy, get well um, before uh, joining us on campus. So again, anyone two years old or, or older is required to uh, wear a face covering while they're on a school site. Um, any students who are not able to wear a face covering um, has the uh, ability to, to um, stay at home for our online distance learning. Um, participating on any activities on campus at this time does require a, a face mask. So as I said earlier, screening does begin at home. So um, as uh, family members are um, taking care of, the, of their, their children or themselves, um, just keep in mind that if you're not feeling well, 
stay home. Uh, nobody wants to be the the one who is responsible for um, sharing any kind of a sickness, whether, you know, um, uh, again, it, it's optional to be here on, on our campus. Once you do arrive on campus, there are physical barriers to kind of point out how far away to distance yourselves as you're walking through our campus, um, or there may be a, a stop sign on the ground to uh, remind you of where you need to stop before entering any of our buildings. Once you arrive at school and, and um, you have your mask on, you leave a vehicle or you walk to campus, as you get to our school, we have um, areas for checking temperature as well. A critical piece is what if somebody comes to school and after some time they start to feel a little sick? Well, one of the first things that we're going to do is uh, check temperatures and take a look at um, maybe isolating students uh, in a in a place where um, they're they're not going to be exposing other people to to um, the cough or the cold or what have you. So to begin with, we'd like to ask you to start by checking to make sure that we have your correct address and telephone number. So you can either send an email to um, Laura Navarro. She is our data entry clerk here in the guidance office uh, or make a phone call. The phone numbers are there, 815-3418 um, or 815-3419. Also reach out to um, Ms. Andrea Carlos. And let's be sure that all year long we, we uh, keep our, camp, our, our um, emergency contact information up to date because there's nothing worse than uh, being a, a child and having to uh, wait a long time while you're getting a headache or you know just feeling uncomfortable. We, we want to really take care of our kids. Okay, so we are now going to discuss the entrances for Azusa High School when your child comes to school. We have two entrances. The first entrance is along the Cerritos Avenue curb or in the student parking lot. So as students are dropped off at the street, they will be lining up with six feet of separation and their mask on at all times, preparing to walk through the mega scanner that's in the main office. And once they're scanned in, they will proceed to their classrooms. If you decide to drop off your student in the student parking lot, they will be dropped off and then they will have to walk along the Cerritos Avenue curb heading to the main office and line up again, preparing to go through the mega scanner, remaining six feet apart and mask on at all times. Here's a little video just kind of showing you how they're gonna line up and how they're gonna go through the mega scanner as they get scanned. The mega scanner is, you'll see this beautiful technology that we have where the students will literally just walk through and it will show that they are under a certain temperature and they will light up green. If they light up red for any reason, we will pull the student to the side and ha um, hand check their temperature. So check out this video. All right, Aztecs, when you come to school, you're gonna line up right outside the main office, one of our entrances and you'll be lined up on the blue dots as shown on the floor. So we're gonna expect that all the students line up on the blue dots as we prepare to walk them through. And here's the walk-in process at the main office. And here come the students. You will walk in and you will be scanned by the computer. After you're scanned, you're gonna walk right out and follow the arrows. <laughs> There will be a staff member standing there looking at the monitor, reading their temperatures. As long as they remain green, they go through. That's a pretty quick process, Mr. Velasco. It sure is. We're going to get all 1,000 students in there, in and out. We also have a second entrance along the Rockvale Street side. And again, you will drop off your child at the curb, the students will walk in through the sliding gate and start lining up six feet apart with their mask on at all time, preparing to enter the East Lab where our second mega scanner is. So let's look at this. All right, Aztecs, right. when you show up, you are going to line up on the Rockville Street side at the gate and you are going to enter after asking the questions. Please walk in. All right, Aztecs, you're going to light up right here at the Rockville Street side. 
You'll be asked a few questions and then you'll be allowed to enter. Go ahead, Mr. Cueva. Question, question, go ahead. Question, questions, please enter. And then you're just gonna follow the walkway all the way to the East Lab. Once there, they will start lining up against the wall near the East Lab. All right, Aztecs, we all also have our Rockvale side set up where you'll enter. You'll be lining up against the wall, entering from the sliding gate. Now we're going to prepare to walk through the Mega Scanner. Our other entrance is the East Computer Lab, so the students will be walking in, and again, they will be getting temperature scanned. And once they're green, that means they meet the requirements, they head right on out. Good job, Aztecs. Doing a great job. Love the social distancing. Quick Alrighty. process. When your child is on campus, we are going to travel from class to class and from quad to quad in a counterclockwise direction. The purpose of this is so we don't travel against any traffic. We will have water filler stations in the senior lounge, the cafeteria, and the north guidance pathway. We are asking the students to bring their own water bottles so they can fill it up themselves. There will be areas on campus that the students will not be allowed to cross. The doors will remain locked and there will be clear labels marked on them that say, this is not an exit. So Aztecs that are here, the students, you could kind of see the quads. On the right side, we have the ones and 200s. On the left sides, we have the three and 400. So we're gonna be walking around the quads and going north, if you're gonna to go to center campus, we're gonna go north to move from class to class. There's not gonna be any cutting across. So here's a little video kind of showing that. And there will be arrows on the ground to kind of show you which direction we're gonna to continue to move. All right, Aztecs, when you're leaving class, you'll always follow the arrows that are on the ground headed to your next class. Great job, Aztecs, going to your next class. Notice the six Keep foot up for great work. Thing. All right. To exit Azusa High after school, we are gonna have the Cerrito side and we are gonna have the Rockvale side. The Cerrito side is gonna have three exits and the Rockvale side will have two exits. Right after school, we are gonna encourage the students to leave campus immediately. We are not gonna allow any students to hang out with each other or to congregate on campus. So it is very important, parents, that you are on time and ready to pick up your student immediately after school. Uh, these next two slides are on classroom disinfect, uh, disinfecting. Uh, every classroom will have wipes uh, for students to wipe down their desk. Uh, every classroom will be sprayed at the end of the day. Every classroom will have a deep clean on Wednesdays. Uh, so uh, uh, students that are not only social distance, students uh, that are wearing masks, uh, students will have the, the plastic partitions at their desks. Uh, they'll also have the opportunity to wipe down their desk when they get to, when they get to class. Uh, so uh, lots of attention to the to the disinfecting. Uh, 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 similarly, uh, Mr. Velasco, if you go to the next slide, uh, it, it, uh, it shows that uh, if you're in the restroom, uh, uh, every other stall, every other ur urinal is going to be blocked off uh, because uh, uh, there's only going to be a certain number uh, that we'll be able to, to ask. I, I'm sorry, there will be a, a certain number that we'll be able to use. Uh, so, and, and similarly, the bathrooms will be deep clean at the end of the day. On Wednesday, bathrooms will be stocked with soap and paper towels, uh, and they will be checked hourly. All righty. 
So this is the piece where we want to be able to spend uh, plenty of time to explain to you how we are shifting from our current distance learning block schedule. So the plan that we've been following has uh, shifted. If you take a look at the Wednesday schedule, that looks like what we do right now on Mondays. So we've moved it over to Wednesdays. Notice also that all of our instruction from zero period through six includes distance learning. So the classes that your students are currently in will remain the same. The teachers that your students have will remain the same. All of our, all of our instruction being provided by teachers is in the distance learning um, model. Okay, so for our zero period kids, on a Monday, they would start at 7.20 in the morning and their class ends at 7.55. Zero period students will meet every single day, Monday through Friday. Then we take a little break, 8 o'clock until 8.30, and that is a time for student and family connections. If parents are trying to reach a teacher or vice versa, teachers trying to reach a parent um, or students trying to communicate with the teacher before classes begin, there is that 30 minutes every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. As we move through our day, we have one hour and 10 minutes of period one on Monday, a, a, a 15 minute passing period. We move on to period three. Again, one hour and 10 minutes of instruction, a passing period, and finally, period five, an hour and 10 minutes of instruction. Again, let me repeat, all of this instruction is distance learning in your home. Following a lunch break from 1230 to 130, we open up our school for one of two cohorts. Each of the students who will return to our campus will be in either cohort A or cohort B. The time of 1.30 to 2.40 is in-person instruction. That time is not required. It is optional uh, for any students who want to come onto campus working with their teachers for tutoring, for intervention, for extra motivation, mentoring or support. Again, on the first week of school, it, we have cohort A for period one and two. So Monday, Monday it's uh, period one and Thursday period two. Tuesday for cohort B, period one, and on Friday, period two. Following the um, dismissal of this group of students uh, at 2.40, we have our seventh period class. Currently, we have some college classes that would be their meeting time or our um, students that are in marching band or uh, a music class that's during seventh period. Those classes, similar to our zero, zero period classes, meet Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Teachers then have their, um, their prep time which is from 2.40 until 3 o'clock. This is our hybrid distance learning block schedule plan for all secondary students. Notice that the time that students would be able to come on campus is that 1.30 to 2.40. The first week of school, it, it is for period one and two. The next week of school, you'll see that it would be for periods three and four. The third week of school in this triad would be for periods uh, five and six. And then we would start the schedule all over again. This is quite different from the schedule we have. This cohort time, this after lunch time is the only time that students would be on campus with a teacher in a classroom for support instruction.
Again, I'll remind you that our instruction continues to be virtual learning through June. Your child's schedule will not change in terms of the classes that they take or the teachers that they have for their classes. That will remain the same. Our hours and the cohort piece, that is something that is new. So um, again, it, it, is, uh, it is a choice to be able to come onto campus for, for that in-person time. If students do not wish to attend during that, uh, during that in-person time, that's a perfect time for them to work on their assignments. I always tell kids every assignment every day. So that would be considered their asynchronous time or their independent working time uh, to, to complete the assignments that have been given to them that uh, may be in their Google Classroom. Uh, after the uh, in-person time, that's the time that our student athletes or our musicians may come onto campus for any um, after-school practices that their coaches or teachers may schedule. And we're about to uh, open it up for questions, but just to clarify, coming in person is optional and uh, we will focus on in-person support. Uh, not more distance, uh, not more distance learning teaching. So uh, if if your son or daughter decides to come in uh, during the Tim's time, the teaching intervention, motivation, mentoring, support time, um, the 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 time there will will, will be uh, to support them for the work that has already been passed out. This will not be new work. Uh, some teachers have talked about. Uh, uh, possibly providing um, some participation points, some extra credit points, helping them with miss, missing assignments. Um, so that's op that's all optional uh, and based on on, the, on each teacher that you have. Again, uh, this is a schedule that um, that that was approved uh, by the district by the board, um, and and this is what we're going to move forward. Um, and we're excited that that uh, even if your child uh, opts not to come in for the tutoring time. Uh, uh, the, there's not gonna be extra work assigned. Uh, and, and the important thing is that this model does not disrupt any student schedules or change any teachers. Uh, the signature programs that we have uh, uh, with, our, with our college classes, IB, AP, CTE, will all stay intact. Um, uh, again, classes stay the same, teachers stay the same. The big difference is that, that the, 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 uh, the minutes per teacher is reduced in order to provide for some, for some uh, optional in-class support time. So we wanted to go ahead and open it up. Uh, Ms. Martinez, we'll, uh, we'll start off with the questions that, that you've pulled, and then we'll open it up to, to uh, parents. Perfect. Thank you for the questions that are being written in the chat. So we're gonna start with the questions in the chat. Um, first one is, uh, Mr. Granados, are we going to be able to park in the teaching parking on the Rockwell side? So, we will continue. No, so no. So, Ms. Pegari, on the on the Rockwell side, as of this time, uh, the Rockwell side is closed. Uh, staff must park uh, on on the Cerrito Street on the Cerrito side, um, and so um, we're going to be parking on the uh, Cerritos staff parking. Uh, if uh, uh, the we, if the parking lot is full, parents and staff will then transition to the student parking lot. Uh, but because uh, at, at this time we are requiring all staff to check in at the main office, um, we, we all need to have the same parking lot and enter to the, through the same entrance, which is the main office. Okay, thank you. Uh, the following question is, hi, my daughter is in the life skills program. Will there be any different protocol for them or a separate meeting to explain what is happening for that program? I'll take that question. So with the life skills program, the only, pretty much the only different thing is they are not going to be checking in through the main office. We currently have many students that are dropped off. We call it the life skills gate where the buses drop them off. The students will congregate there with their teachers and all their support staff and instructional aides. And there will be staff there to, to temperature screen the students before they enter campus. And once they have them all together, then the staff will then walk them to their classrooms. Um, are we going to have a different meeting uh, for life skills program only? Um, I haven't been told that by the district office, but that is something I'll ask uh, Ms. Kremer, the district uh, 
Director of Special Education. Thank you. The next question is, I or comment, I have two sophomore students. Can I request to have them go on the same day? So um, the, the, the way uh, we spoke to, to our staff today, uh, we uh, asked staff uh, to uh, uh, divide their classes in alphabetical order um, and, and divide it in half. So for example, if, if uh, Mr. Hart uh, has 36 students, uh, he would divide his class into 18 and 18. That would be cohort A and cohort B. Uh, uh, if it happens to work out where, the, where, where your Aztec scholars have the same day, perfect. Uh, if, if, if you notice that, that it's not the same day, uh, teachers can be a bit flexible, but it is important to keep the same cohorts intact. So uh, we need to make sure that we change it uh, at the beginning. Um, so that way, uh, 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 the next time we see their teachers, they're, they're in the same cohort. Okay, the next question in the in order of the chat is, I was, um, what's gonna happen with the special ed kids? What happens if a kid runs away? So if for some reason we have a student that leaves class without permission or runs away, we will have our staff immediately follow the student and help them get back to their class. So it happens, it probably will happen, and you know it will disrupt our protocol, but we have to make sure the student is safe and we'll get them back into the classroom. Thank you. The following question in the chat is, will students be issued an ID card for this year? And is that a requirement to enter campus? An ID card is not a, re a requirement. And we are currently working with our um, contracted photography studio on making the IDs happen. Um, so eventually it will happen. Uh, we're still working on that, our plan on how that's gonna happen though. Okay, sorry, one moment. The next question is, well, regarding the schedule, um, does this apply to the special ed kids? Yes, this schedule also applies to the special ed kids. And so just like any Aztec and regular student, um, they're assigned classes. So if they are in their special ed class first period, um, then they would come the first week during Tim's time, depending what cohort they're put in on that during that week. So they'll follow the same schedule. The support instruction is basically just on-site tutoring. So the Tim's time could be tutoring, mentoring. Uh, it, it could be. Um, a student getting some acceleration time, it will depend on, on, on what that particular student may need. And again, they would be going to the teachers, to their regular classroom teachers. Uh, so if, it, if a student needs some assistance, um, whether they are um, a student that has, uh, maybe they have low grades, or you might have a student that has, you know, um, A's and B's they want to get that extra time or have that time to um, interact with their peers in a classroom, that is what this, um, this support time is uh, from 140 uh, on. Um, the next question in the chat, which goes along with the your answer, Ms. Pegori, if students are receiving Ds or Fs, is the TIMS mandatory? Once again, um, all of our regular instruction is our distance learning program and the, the instruction that uh, takes place after, uh, after lunch is, uh, is optional. So it is a choice for students. And, uh, you know, I, I always say to kids, you know, every assignment every day. So if uh, for some reason they're not getting their assignments done in the morning during their distance learning time and um, yourselves as parents say, you know, maybe they better just go ask another question or, you know, get some extra help from a teacher, uh, then, then the option that, that everybody has is to be able to come during the in-person time. Is the 
Tim's also for children that have IEPs. Yes. So any student that has an IEP, they are more than welcome to attend the schedule that we just shared with you, um, specifically the Tim's after school uh, program. Next question. Do you recommend students to attend Tim's program if students are receiving D's or F's or lower than a 2.0? If, if it was my child, I would highly recommend that your child attend the Tim's program to get that extra intervention, motivation, support in the classroom. I have a fresh, my own child is a freshman at Azusa High, and I am going to be sending him to get that extra support. And, and again, uh, we presented this to our staff today, and some teachers were already talking about, okay, what can we provide uh, extra? Uh, for for the students that that uh, show up to this to this tutoring intervention time, um, uh, I, I heard someone mention you know uh, participation points. I heard someone mention uh, you know accepting some late work. I, I heard them I heard them mention like they can come in and we do a test. So there's different things that different teachers are going to be doing. Uh, it all depends on the teacher. Um, but uh, this is if 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 you feel that this is safe, which it is going to be. Uh, we, we highly encourage um, uh, your Aztec scholar uh, to come in and, and like Ms. Pergari said, it's not only for tutoring, uh, it's, it's also for our AP kids and our IB kids that want to continue and, and, and advance their studies. And, our, and, our, and our, uh, all of our kids that want to advance their studies and, and, and get uh, A's and B's to, to be college and career ready. Next question, are buses going to pick up the SPED kids or are we dropping off our children? So the buses for the life skills program, those of you that have scheduled um, pickup and transportation will be coming by bus. Um, if you have any questions regarding not being scheduled at this time, you'll have to reach out to Ms. Stephanie De La Torre at the district office, but it'll be pretty much the same that we did last year, dropping off at the, at the gate and then after school picking up at the gate. When is the deadline for deciding which option you choose? There is no deadline. Uh, our, uh, again, our regular instruction is distance learning and um, the choice to come to our support program is a, is a daily uh, opportunity for students. Uh, question for Ms. Turner. Could we reserve the Cerritos parking lot for teachers and ask parents and students to park in the student lot? This would be really helpful for those who teach at other schools. Yes, Ms. Turner. In fact, what we are doing for the staff, um, we are getting all of our staff parking placards that they can hang on their mirror. So the first day, our plan, if we don't have the placards by... Um, by the week before we come back, uh, we are gonna hand them to you guys and we're gonna have someone at the gate only allowing the staff to come in to park and then we're gonna close the gate um, and then the over overflow parking will then continue at the st student parking lot. I, I do wanna add, I do wanna add that uh, in the staff parking lot, there's only 80 spots and we have uh, over 130 staff members. So even with the placards, um, during this time, uh, our staff is going to have to park in the, in, the, in the student parking lot. The next question in the chat is, will a student's grade be affected if you do not feel safe sending them to in-person practice now that it's available in person? The in-person program is a support program. It, it could only help your student. <laughs> Uh, so it's ungraded, it's uh, optional. Uh, so it, it is just, it's an, another support for students. Thank you. For AP and IB testing, will we need to go back to school? I can take this one for, um, for IB testing. Um, and I saw Ms. Harper here. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Harper. I know for IB testing, uh, they are only testing um, uh, on the current exams that you're taking now, there's not gonna be exams in May. Um, and, and also for AP uh, exams, 
uh, the majority of the AP exams will be uh, done on the computer at home. However, there are, there are some exams that have to be done on paper pencil on campus. Uh, and so please ask your AP teacher um, uh, whether they are the at home exam or the in person exam. Uh, most of them again are, are, are at home on the computer, uh, but there are a, hand, uh, a handful, including the you know, uh, Spanish language, Spanish lit, Chinese, French, that, uh, that have to be done on campus. Great, next question in the chat is, what is the protocol if a student has a fever upon check-in? So, if any, go ahead. All right. Go ahead. If a student has a fever upon check-in, we are immediately going to have our health aide um, take and observe the student and check for other symptoms that can relate to uh, additional sickness. The, she will then decide whether or not um, that student is to remain in the health office or if needed, uh, take them to our observation room, contact parents for immediately for immediate pickup. Thank you. Um, is seventh period going to be entirely in person? I have a senior and a freshman. My question is, oh, sorry, two separate questions. Is seventh period going to be entirely in person? According to the schedule, yes, it is uh, seventh period is in person. Okay. And the following question to that is, I have a senior and a freshman. My question is, if they aren't in the same court court together, I feel this increases chances of COVID in my home. That is my only concern in them being in a different cohort. Yes. Yeah, so we understand that we do have um, brothers and sisters that could possibly be in separate cohorts. If it becomes an issue, um, our teachers will be somewhat flexible where we can hopefully work it out that they show up within the same cohort. But um, we need to be notified of that so we could try to work that out. Um, so please, uh, uh, it'll be uh, working with our, with our teachers uh, to, to make sure that um, when we return, we'll, we'll have one week uh, uh, to, for the staff to, for the teachers to uh, create their cohorts, and you should have information be before April 19th as to what cohort they're in. Um, the good news is that uh, even uh, our large classes, which could be, you know, the size of 34 or 36 students, if you divide that by two, it's 18 seats. Uh, and most classes with the, the four feet of separation from each other are, are between, uh, you know, 16 to 20 seats. So there will be flexibility for, for a couple of changes. Uh, but we want to make sure that our cohorts stay consistent. So for clarification, um, the following question from the chat is, how do I know what cohort my child is in? So we, we just had a brief optional meeting with our teachers today. Um, and so the, the teachers are uh, ha have not had this conversation with students yet. I envision uh, that teachers will start these conversations uh, when we return after spring break, because uh, we have that week from the, the uh, starting the 12th, and then uh, we'll return, uh, then, then we begin this program on the 19th. So, so we'll have at least five days where the teachers will inform each of their classes uh, what their cohorts are gonna look like. Is homework going to be assigned and due on a day-by-day -day basis? Uh, for for the Tim's program, there will not be any assignments outside of the program itself. Now, within the distance learning program, I'm sure you will continue getting homework assignments. Thank and, and, you. And again, and, and again ju just to be clear, um, the, the 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 classes do not change. The teachers do not change. The, 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 the processes are not going to change. Uh, teachers are going to continue using Google Classroom. They're going to continue assigning work the exact same way. Uh, the only difference is that the length of the classes is going to be shorter. And uh, after the, the lunch time at home, uh, the, the, your child will have the opportunity 
uh, to to come to campus for some extra support if they desire to. But no different, no new assignments are going to be given during the Tim's time, uh, and uh, it will be with with their own teachers during during that Tim's time. Thank you. The next question in the chat is, is this schedule going to be for next school year in September as well? No, um, it's only for the remainder of this school year. Um, as for next school year, we do not know what that looks like yet. Um, so that will be discussed, I'm sure, uh, right at the end of this school year, what next year is going to look like. The following question from the chat is, orchestra has students from other schools. Will they be able to come to Azusa for in-person rehearsals? The answer to that is yes. So um, if we, because they are part of your, your orchestra class during period seven, they will have that opportunity. Any news on a prom and graduation ceremony? We are working on a program that relates to prom. It will probably not be a dance type where you are dancing with someone. Um, as for graduation, uh, we are going to be working on a, a plan for graduation as long as the numbers continue to go down, um, the baseline for graduation could be a drive-through ceremony. But what we are shooting for is to do something on our brand new Aztec football field. What that will look like, we're not sure yet. We're still uh, waiting for the numbers to continue to go down. And also it will determine which tier we're in with LA County. Thank you. The following question from the chat, how will our music classrooms look like? Will the students have plexiglass dividers and will choir students meet and be able to sing? Want to take that, Lorraine? So this is a um, question that we're continuing to work on getting answered. There are um, particular types of PPE um, that um, can be available for students. Uh, at this point, we have not been able to, um, to gather in that way. So there is more information that we are, um, are waiting for at this time. Could I just ask something to that real quickly? Um, for the parent, just so you know, we have just um, submitted the request to purchase all PPEs for wind players as well as singers. Um, so they will have special masks and special um, covers for their instruments. So hopefully we will have them by the start of the April 19th. Thank you. Thank for you, Ms. Turner. Thank you. The following question in the chat is, are you going to have extra mask in case a kid forgets or loses their mask? Yes, we will have extra mask in all of our offices, especially at the entrance when students are coming in, because if they did forget it, we will make sure we get them one. At, at the same time, parents, uh, please, the importance of, of students bringing a mask to school. If, if they need another one when they're on campus, that's great. But, but we don't want students in line if they don't have a mask. It's not fair for the other students or the other families. It's also highly recommended families that you, not only is your child wearing a mask, but they have a backup mask just in case their mask becomes dirty or they drop it or whatever, whatever other reason. Thank you. The following question in the chat, for senior students, will they have a student parking permit and when can they request it? Uh, for students, there's not a student parking permit, um, but they will be expected to park in the student parking lot. Thank you. Let's say I will not be sending my daughter this school year. Will I be able to send my daughter the next school year? Yes, of course. Next, uh, the, again, the, the TIMS program is an optional program, but we are highly encouraging it. Uh, next school year, we don't know what our schedule is going to look like. And um, but of course, your child will be welcome to come to school. 
the following question is, if parents decide to keep students in distance learning, who needs to be notified? So your child will remain in distance learning according to the schedule. And then we have our lunch and then we have the Tim's program. We are gonna, the teachers are gonna be reaching out to the students asking them uh, which ones plan on coming to Tim's. So you'll be notifying the teachers. Uh, but, but, but again, uh, th there, there is no survey. There is no opting out to stay at home. Everyone is staying at home. It's the same schedule at home, the same distance learning, the same teachers. Um, the, the only difference is after lunchtime, students have the opportunity, it's optional, to come in for one hour and 10 minutes uh, to be with their uh, designated teacher. But there is no survey that we have to fill out and, and, and uh Nothing changes uh, on that on that end. Thank you. The following question from the chat: Who will be supervising kiddos in the observation room? So, if a student is in the observation room, they are either going to be supervised by designated classified staff or administration. Following question: If period seven is completely in person. How do we offer instruction to students who do not wish to come back? That, that, that is a challenge that we do have, uh, which, is, which is a tough news. Uh, the, the, the good news is that uh, we don't have many classes that are seventh period. Uh, and so, so yes, it may impact our fantastic uh, choir program. Yes, it may impact our fantastic band program. Uh, uh, but those are really the two seventh period courses that we have. Uh, the the, uh, the uh, administrative justice class that we have, uh, Ms. Pegorari and I uh, envision that it will continue to be virtual. Uh, so again, uh, and, and we're still talking with, with our, with our uh, choir band teachers to see what, what are some of those solutions because uh, we, we want to make sure that, that uh, all of our Aztecs uh, stay engaged. So stay tuned for that question. Thank you. Following question, is there a nurse on campus all the time while students are present? No, we don't have a nurse on campus 100% of the time. We do have a health aide um, that's on campus. And if needed, we could always call a nurse for support. Thank you. Uh, following question, will life skills students be provided transportation during their lunch time, 1230 to 1.30 to be at school on time for Tim's? That is correct. So when the students that are in the life skills program that get picked up will be picked up before Tim's begins and arrive on campus. Thank you. Following question, if my child doesn't go back, will his classes and schedule be the same? Yes, we are not changing any of the schedules. Your child's gonna still have the same, if they have a zero period, zero period, all the way to six period, that will remain the same. We are not changing teachers or classes. Thank you. Good evening. Will students in the life skill program have the same adult to student ratio in the hybrid model as they did prior to the pandemic? Yes, so if your child, the, the life skills T classes will continue to have their teacher and their support staff. And if your child requires a one-on-one -on -one or SSA, um, they will be there also. Following question in the chat, any different protocol for students that are fully vaccinated? No, there is no different protocol. Everything is the same for all students. Following question, what happens if a student cannot go to the seventh period in person? That is something we're still working on with our, our teachers. Um, so we're still learning and getting more information on how we're gonna handle that. So more information to come with that question. Will one-on-one -on -one support staff and added adult support staff be mainstreaming, mainstreaming with their student into their inclusion class? That is the plan. If your child is in any uh, general, gen ed classes, um, they will be followed by support staff. 
are they counted in as an added body during that class? Yes. So each class has a certain limit of capacity that can be held, um, but they are part of that class and counted. And that includes the teacher, it counts as one. The students count, uh, everybody that's in the class counts. So again, um, most classes ha have an average of between 15 to 22 uh, max capacity bodies. Thank you. The following question in the chat is, I have a freshman taking a Citrus College course. Will this course continue online? All of the Citrus College courses will continue online through the semester as well as summer. The following question, if my son has banned for a seventh period and I decide not to send him back, does that mean my son will not be able to, to participate in conditioning? I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? If my son has banned for seventh period and I decide not to send him back, does that mean my son will not be able to participate in conditioning? Uh, so, like, like we said earlier, uh, the, uh, the band and, and uh, orchestra choir is, is uh, uh, something that we're still working on. Uh, uh, I, I know uh, that uh, at least for uh, uh, Mr. Uh, for the band program, uh, the, the, the teacher uh, th does have a, a, an, ex an extensive um, uh, uh, program online where the, where the kids record themselves and they play and then the teacher, the teacher puts them together. I'm sure they have something uh, similarly uh, uh, similar in, in the choir program. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, the band teacher, uh, the band instructor, the, the, the choir instructor will reach out uh, to, to the students once we, can, once we figure that one out. Thank you. The following question is, will classified staff be pulled from academic instruction in our class to be to supervise kids in the observation room? We, we are going to have designated classified staff. We will not have any instructional aides um, do any of that. Um, so the admin is still working on determining who's going to be the support with admin. Thank you. A following question. My child receives specialized academic instruction in the life skills program. What type of instruction will he receive in the TIMS program? So the TIMS program is designed for reteaching, interve intervention, motivation, additional support. So that is the type of instruction that will follow. Thank you. Following question, have parents dropped off EpiPins and so on with the health clerk on campus and have they been notified of the protocol? Um, I do not believe that has been done yet. And that's an excellent question that I will follow up with the school nurse. Thank you. The following question, if my child has banned seventh period, will their grade be affected if I choose not to send them in to in-person practice now that it's available? That is something that we are still working on with, with the teachers to determine how we're gonna best support the seventh period students. So there's still a lot of questions that we need to ask on how that we're gonna keep our kids engaged in that, in that period. Thank you. Um, Another question is, period seven and the Citrus course overlap. My child is in both. How should we work that out? That is something that we're uh, reaching out to our Citrus College instructors with um, to determine the best solution for our students since this uh, schedule has just come out. Thank you. So far, those are all the questions in our chat. So we have a couple more slides and videos that we want to uh, continue going through. So uh, uh, keep on adding the questions as we're, as we're going through. We, we have about uh, six more slides, uh, and, then, and then we'll open it up again. So, uh, so far, some, some uh, good questions. Uh, uh, so Mr. Velasco, uh, the next slide is uh, uh, similar to, uh, to when uh, your child is on campus. Uh, 
we, we want them to, to uh, make sure that they bring their notebook, their backpack, their pencil, whatever they're gonna need for that, for that class. Uh, but also we want them to bring their, their, uh, their laptop fully charged, uh, just in case also bring their laptop charger. Uh, the important thing is that if they are on an athletic team, uh, that they come, they, that they come with their, with their uh, uh, that they come dressed for practice. Uh, the locker rooms will not be open. So the students need to come dress for practice if they're gonna to come to the Tim's program and then right after go, go to practice or a game. So make sure that they, that they come ready uh, uh, to suit up and, and, and practice or play their sport. Uh, also the, the Tim's program opens up at 1.30. So we, uh, 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 we're, uh, we should have students on campus at 1.20 p.m. And, and you, you saw how fast they can go through the, through the, through the mega scanners. So uh, uh, what we don't want is students uh, waiting in front of the uh, in front of school at twelve thirty at one because they're going to have to wait outside until until um until we open campus. Ms. Pegarari, this one's you. <laughs> Thank you. Our after school expectations: once tutoring and support uh, Tim's program is complete, students exit the campus. And I think Dr. Gomez, you already covered some of that. Um, they exit the campus, make sure they're ready, they're dressed, they're out and congregate on campus. And again, parents can pick up their students at either of our exits, Rockvale or Cerritos Avenue. Once again, we share the information with regard to Azusa Unified School District Chromebook Exchange. If for some reason the um, camera has worn out or for some reason the computer, the, the um, Chromebook is not, not functioning properly, we do have an opportunity for exchange. So please email Ms. Campos. Her address is provided there, acompos at azusa.org. She will send you an online form, complete that, and then she'll let you know when to come in uh, to pick up a, a Chromebook for exchange. Our office is open for exchanges, uh, 7.30 to 3.15, Monday through Friday. However, next week, we will not be on campus. Every student that is doing any of our state testing, um, especially right now, we're in the middle of our English learners uh, uh, assessment. Uh, it is required that the students have the secure browser that's provided by our school district. And once again, our uh, free meals are still available. Uh, Azusa High School happens to be one of the locations. We do not have a lunch program or breakfast program during the time that uh, we have the distance learning or the, um, or the uh, in-school program. All families are welcome to take part in the free school, school, free school meals program with our drive throughs So our next meeting with questions and answers uh, drop in on Monday, April the 12th from 12 to noon. Um, you can drop in and uh, check in with our um, community liaisons in uh during the middle of the day we have a cafe azteca coming up also on the 15th as well uh there's a spanish version and an english version and then mr velasco will be hosting some some google meets with our students during the lunch hour so april 13th or april 15th depending on the grade level of your students So uh, before we answer the last questions, Mr. Velasco, go ahead and press play on this last video, and then we'll come back to the questions. It's, it's a, a brief video that uh, may answer some of your questions, and it's a recap of what we talked about. AUSD middle and high school students, we are excited to welcome you back in April. Estudiantes de secundaria y preparatoria de AUSD, estamos muy contentos de darles la bienvenida al campus en abril. This video contains important information about guidelines and changes that you can expect as we work to safely welcome you back. Este video te contiene información importante sobre las pautas y los cambios que se pueden esperar mientras trabajamos para darles la bienvenida de manera segura. 
We understand that you're excited to see your friends and we're excited to see you. But for everyone's safety, we must maintain our social distance while on campus. Sabemos que estarás emocionado de ver a tus amigos y nosotros estamos emocionados de verte. Pero por la seguridad de todos, debemos mantener nuestra distancia social mientras estamos en el campus. This means not gathering in groups, and when you're moving around campus, follow the directional arrows and go straight to your destination. Esto significa no reunirse en grupos y cuando caminas por el campus. Acuérdese de seguir las flechas de dirección y ir directamente a tu destino en el campus. Throughout campus, you will see directional arrows and markings indicating where to stand in order to maintain social distancing. En todo el campus verás flechas direccionales y marcas que indican dónde pararse para mantener el distanciamiento social. All students and staff members are required to wear a mask while on campus. Se requiere que todos los estudiantes y miembros del personal usen cubrebocas en la escuela. Gators and bandanas are not allowed. Cloth or disposable face masks are required. No se permite bandanas ni pañuelos. Se requiere el uso de cubrebocas de tela o desechables. Face mask logos and designs must be in alignment with the school's dress code policies. Los logotipos y el diseño de las cubrebocas deben estar alineadas con las normas del código de vestir de la escuela. Each school site will have designated entry points for students. Upon entering, students will pass by the mega scanner, which will take their temperature. The mega scanner has the ability to take the temperature of large groups at once. Cada escuela tendrá puntos de entrada designados para los estudiantes. Al ingresar, los estudiantes pasarán por el mega scanner, que tomará su temperatura. El mega scanner tiene la capacidad de escanear la temperatura de grupos grandes a la vez. Our campuses now have refillable water bottle stations installed. Please have your students bring water bottles to fill each day. Nuestras escuelas ahora tienen estaciones de recarga de botellas de agua. Trae una botella de agua para rellenar todos los días. All parents and guests conducting business on our campuses must check in at the office and have their temperature checked prior to entry. Access to campuses will be strictly limited to students, staff, and essential business for your safety and ours. Todos los padres y visitantes que realicen negocios en nuestros campus deben registrarse en la oficina y tomar su temperatura antes de ingresar. El acceso de los campus estará estrictamente limitado a estudiantes, personal y negocios esenciales para su seguridad y la nuestra. We encourage you to conduct business by phone and email as much as possible. Le recomendamos que resuelva asuntos por escuela para obtener detalles específicos de Pantel. Nos vemos en abril. Thanks for watching. Be sure to attend your school's reopening meeting for site-specific details. See you in April. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mr. Velasco, if you could put it back on the on the previous slide again. Um, I, I know parents, we've shared a lot of information, staff, we've shared a lot of information. Uh, we will have some, some more uh, meetings uh, when we return. Uh, and, and so if you wanna uh, take a picture, we'll, we'll also post it on, on, um, on uh, uh, Facebook, Instagram, just a reminder, uh, so that we can have some follow-up uh, questions. Uh, but we're gonna open it up again to uh, the questions that, that were asked. Yes, we have any questions in the chat. Um, starting with, will the school be provided with the proper PPE for the observation room? Yes, um, if a child is put into the observation room, uh, the staff member will be um, put up, put on a gown, put on the mask, put on the, the, the shield, and um, making sure that the student has a clean mask and everybody will be fully PPD'd. Great. A uh, following follow up question to that. Also, if a child ends up having COVID in one of the cohorts, will we be notified? Definitely. Um, we will be following a contract tracing uh, to determine who was in that cohort. Thank you. Following question. Is there a brochure on the Azusa website that explains what the TIMS program has to offer? I am not aware of one at this time, but I will follow up with the district office on that question. So, so, and just to be clear, the the um, the on the azusa.org website, uh, the the documents uh, uh, are available that talk about that talk about the schedule. 
uh, along with with uh, um, with the uh, safety requirements. Um, if there's more questions, I can I can look at the website and and cut and paste exactly where it's at. But there is information. Um, and again, the the Tim's program uh, is is not is not anything uh, that's going to be different. Uh, it's going to be your son or daughter's child that has them for an hour and ten minutes for support, intervention, advancement uh, of their class and grade. It's not a special program. It's not a special class. There's not a separate grade uh, for that class. Uh, the teachers are not, are not giving any extra work. Uh, it's, it's to support them and what they're doing during the virtual time. The following question is, student lockers, will they be available as usual? No, the lockers will not be available um, for the remainder of the school year. Is the school, um, will the school be able to provide COVID tests on campus for students? Gomez, have you heard the latest on that? Um, we, we do have some tests, uh, but as of right now, uh, uh, they're not for, for all of our students. Uh, they're looking uh, possibly for for some of our athletes that are going to uh, be participating in close contact sports, um, but there hasn't been any information with regards to to uh, all of our students being tested before they come on campus. Thank you. The following question is: Do the students have to stay at Tim's the whole time? Yes. Yeah, so if they do report to Tim's, uh, they will stay from one thirty till two forty. Thank you. The following question, can students take their personal Chromebooks to school? Yes, they can. Um, the, the only issue with that is if they're taking any state testing, um, they will have to use a district issued Chromebook. Uh, also, Mr. Velasco, to be clear, um, they, they, if it's their own personal Chromebook, they won't be able to get on, onto our website. Is that correct? Oh, that is correct. They're not going to have access to um, the Wi-Fi. So it's highly, you're right, Mr. Gomez. Um, so we will need to check out a district issue Chromebook to that child. Thank you. What if there's a situation in class and how will that be handled? Um, I'm assuming that if a child is sick, I'm guessing that's what that means. If, if a child reports that they're not feeling well, uh, the teacher will immediately notify the health office, um, the health office clerk or admin will come and get that child and observe the child to determine if we need to have the child report to the health office or if it's looking a little bit more serious and we need to take it to the observation room. If the life school students and support staff will be in two cohorts, sorry, so the life skills students and support staff will be in two cohorts or on the days they mainstream go with the kids straight off the bus to their mainstream class? So the, the, the teacher and the staff there, we have a tricky situation because we have a lot of moving parts with life skills. But we are going to have two separate cohorts for life skills. And the teacher is going to have to kind of look at all the students' schedules to try to align it. Thank you. Um, a question in the chat mentions off topic, will there be a memorial service for Mr. Lewis? Um, Ms. Ms. Pegarari just spoke to, um, to his brother, uh, uh, Dwayne uh, uh, Lewis. Um, uh, uh, you want to talk briefly about it, um, Ms. Pegari? Thank you, Dr. Gomez. Um, so, Mr. Um, th there isn't a planned memorial service, say, for uh, our school campus. Um, Mr. It is uh, early, and Mr. Lewis's um, uh, brother uh, is is trying to figure out what would be um, what would be appropriate. So um, it is something uh, that 
that, uh, you know, it was uh, very shocking that this occurred. And uh, so it will take him some time to determine um, how to uh, respectfully celebrate his, his, his brother's life. So thank you for asking. And uh, uh, the uh, Mr. Lewis on the way out did say that he would send me his address uh, if anybody um, uh, wanted to uh, provide any letters or anything that they wanted to share with uh, uh, with, with uh, our counselor uh, of 31 years, uh, Mr. Lewis. So stay tuned. Um, we'll, we'll provide some information, more information. What is um, very difficult at this time uh, is, is the fact that there are there are such limitations and uh in terms of you know the number of people that can can gather and, and that kind of a thing so um so yes thank you thank you um there is a follow-up question in the chat do we have to show up to school for any exam uh for, for we don't have to show up to a school for any uh teacher exams no um, if you're talking about AP or IB, uh, uh, for I, IB, um, almost positive that we do not have to show up for any IB exams. For AP, there are some exams that are paper and pencil that do need to be taken in class uh, on campus. So, uh, Michelle, I, I don't know what, what type of test you're referring to. Uh, AP government, Michel says. AP government, AP government, Michelle, is at home on the computer. Good luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a question is, are special ed kids going to have PE class? Yes, if it's, in, if it's on their schedule, um, then they will have PE class. At this moment, those are the questions from the chat. If there are any other questions that have not been answered or you need more clarification on, uh, feel free to raise your hand virtually and um, we can designate you to speak. Barbara Lopez, you may unmute your mic. Okay, so what I was understanding, I thought they were going back to school, period. You know, not distant learning still. The only time they're going back now is from the 120 to 240. So they're and actually, they're just staying home still. That is correct. <clears throat> Distance learning program that we have right now will continue. Okay, because I, I misunderstood. I thought they were going back to school altogether. So that's why I was so happy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lopez. Thank you. We have Ms. Rosa Isela raising her hand. Please feel free to unmute your mic. Yes. I have a I have a question. Um, I have two children, a daughter with special needs. If you were gonna drop them off, you know, like in the front of the school, and one of them gets dropped off by the gate, is that how I supposed to do it? In case they go back to school. If you, if your child is not a life skills program, um, but is yeah. has special needs. They're in the life skills program? Only one. And the other one is not? Yes. And the other one is, has special needs? Yes. Okay, so you and I will have to have a, a meeting to discuss that situation so we could make sure we safely get your child on campus. So I'm gonna put my email in the chat box and you can reach out to me with your phone number and information and I will call you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rosa. Uh, a couple of questions that popped up in the chat. Will zero period have an in-person time? 
the zero period is still distance learning. Thank you. And uh, just for and, clarification. And, and, and just, just, to, just to follow up on that, uh, zero period does not have an in-person time. The zero period teachers, uh, 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 remember uh, Aztecs from eight to 8.30, there, there is a teacher a student slash parent check-in time. So some of the teachers may use that time uh, on, on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday uh, to do some, some additional check-in time uh, virtually from 8 to 30. Thank you. And for clarification for one of our guests, um, so they are, we are not, or they are not going back to school physically. For the TIMS program, your child has the option to return physically from 1.30 till 2.40. But the, the, the main instruction, the mandatory time that you have to be uh, uh, is still distance learning uh, from uh, 8.30 to 12.30. That, that is still distance learning. Uh, the teachers don't change. The schedule does not change. Uh, it's just the amount of minutes, uh, and then they, uh, after 12.30, they go to lunch, and then they, they have the opportunity. Uh, it's, it's optional if they want to come to the in-person uh, teaching, uh, 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 the tutoring, uh, intervention, uh, mentoring, motivation, support time. Ms. Sandra Vieira, you have a question? You may re uh, unmute your mic. Yes, um, so I came in a little bit uh, later for the meeting. So um, I was just wondering for the this team's program that you guys are having, is this gonna be happening every day from Monday to Friday? Uh, or is it like only a couple of days a week? Mr. Velasco, can you can you go back to, to the uh, schedule? Just, just so we can leave it on there? Yeah, I think uh, I kinda missed that. And, uh, and just, just to be clear, um, uh, uh, okay. at, at the latest tomorrow, we will be uh, sending this PowerPoint uh, uh, to all, uh, we'll be emailing to all students and to parents and also sending mm -hmm. a text. Uh, yeah. So that way you have this presentation. Um, and, and also, um, Ms. Pegarari, myself, and Mr. Velasco added our, our emails on the chat box. So, mm -hmm. so you can email us with any questions. So, so your question, Ms. Vieira, is uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Tim's time. Uh, where they can, where they they have the option to come in is only Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and if okay. you notice, if you notice, Ms. Viera, the minimum day changed mm -hmm. from Monday to Wednesday. Okay. 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 I'll be okay. checking more on that. Um, yeah. Because yeah, I I know that you know there are days that my son does have other periods that end until uh, two or a little bit after two, so. I was thinking, okay, how are they gonna do the teams when they have all the peers? Because I know he's doing okay in most of the classes, but there's one, but that will be the one that he's not doing that well, it will be on, peri uh, I think, second period. So if anything, he, um, that I will wanna send him is for, it will be for that particular class that he's not doing well. So. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. I'll be checking more on, on that um, schedule and trying to understand it a little better. <laughs> Thank and, you. And, uh, and once you get the email, if you have any questions, please uh, please give us a call or send us an email. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Actually, you should you could be checking your emails already. Uh, that email was sent out by seven thirty by seven thirty today. Okay. Um. Awesome. Yeah. You're welcome. And. Just a follow-up question from Ms. Via Gomez. So just to clarify for her, distance learning remains the same, but optional school from 1.30 to 2.30, correct? Distance learning remains the same, same classes, same teachers, with the optional TIMS program from 1.30 to 2.40. And, and, and then um, Ms. Via Gomez, if, if your son or daughter uh, uh, plays a sport, th that would be uh, right after that. Thank you, thank you. 
Okay, um, we have about nine minutes or less before we end this meeting. Are there any other questions that you need a clarification on or some positive feedback? <laughs> Feel free to raise your hand virtually or um, if you can. So uh, parents, uh, that was the, the mandatory 14 seconds uh, that we ask um, our staff to, to give our students to reply uh, during this virtual time. Um, uh, we, we, we'll still hang around uh, for, for the last eight minutes, but um, we, we wanna thank, uh, we, had, we had at one time over 85, um, 85 members here, uh, which was extremely large. So, uh, and then if you add that with our 50 Spanish parents, uh, so just excited to see so many people interested in, in uh, what we're going to do April 19th. Um, uh, so thank you, students. Thank you, parents. Uh, thank you, Aztec staff, uh, for being here. Um, uh, thank you for uh, uh, the staff and students that, that uh, brought up uh, Mr. Lewis. Uh, still heartbroken. And we're going to um, uh, make Azusa and the, and the community better uh, through him and for him. So we want to thank you for that. Um, and, and again, uh, if you have any questions, please email us. Uh, I want to send a big shout out to uh, uh, Miss uh, uh, Marissa Martinez and Leti Enriquez for helping to put all of this together. Um, uh, uh, greatly appreciated. Yay! I want to uh, give a shout out to uh, Miss Peregrini for doing the best presentation job. I want to give a big boo to Mr. Velasco. Boo! Uh, but just uh, uh, parents, uh, thank you for for uh, believing uh, in the Aztecs. Uh, thank you for believing in our staff and. Uh, if, if you do decide to, to um, send your kiddos, just know uh, that uh, 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 we're going to do our best 110% uh, to make sure that they're safe and that our staff is safe uh, because we want, we want everybody to, to, um, to go through this together uh, uh, in, a, in a positive manner and come out uh, safe. Thank you. So, um, Ms. Pegorari, Mr. Velasco, anything else? We have six minutes, parents. Uh, if there's any, any other questions, we can go ahead and start logging off. Uh, we'll hang out for the next six minutes. Thank you, Ms. Estrada. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony Marquez, Ashley Ramirez, Barbara Lopez, Brenda Capetillo, Cecil Rodriguez, Christian, Cindy Estrada, Claudia Heredia, Daniel Dominguez, David Fierro.